All right. So we are uh, speaking this morning with Francis Wilson of the Acts of Grace Foundation. And uh, I wanted to get Francis's perspective as a donor and as a funder, um, kind of what it was like uh, for her role uh, when uh, COVID-19 kind of became real uh, for her and sort of related to that when it was like, uh, when COVID-19 became real for you. So Francis, uh, thanks so much for joining us. And maybe if you could kind of start uh, with those two questions. Sure. Thanks for having me. I'm uh, kind of fun to be part of a conversation like this the other way around. I've had yeah. lots of these conversations where I've been able to call charities, but uh, it's neat to share our perspective. So thanks. You're I think COVID-19 came to a real reality for Acts of Grace about mid-March. Um, so in, we're based out of Ontario and pretty much province-wide, I think maybe across the country. About a week before that, the governments had made the announcement that schools would close. And then over the next 10 days, as I was home with my children over what was a planned March break, um, and I was intending to be on vacation, I kept getting increasing numbers of emails when I would have expected everybody else, all the charities, to also be off with families for spring breaks. Um, and there was increasing urgency, increasing, you know, I, I won't call it panic because no one's really panicked, um, but increasing urgency, increasing uncertainty around the projects that they were in the middle of applying to us for. So we were right in the middle of a grant application cycle and actually on the second stage of that, the charities were working towards doing really detailed applications for us. And I started getting emails about, can we change timelines? Can we change budget? Is it okay to change the project? Are you really moving forward with this? And then about March 20th, March 22nd, um, I, had a conversation with the founders and trustees of the foundation and said to them, I don't even know if we can go ahead. So what had happened was about on the weekend, about Saturday, um, there had been sort of a conversation about essential and non-essential uh, work and businesses and charities and what would continue and what would not. And um, charities were just sort of all saying, oh my goodness, the stock market started to go I started hearing from charities about funders maybe not being donors and institutional funders maybe not being around longer term and there was just this general sense of panic in the news and on the monday i got on the phone for you know my standing weekly status call with um our trustees and said i don't know if it makes sense to go forward with this and that's really after we you know we stopped and prayed and we we talked about it and we suddenly realized all the projects that the charities were in the middle of applying for us for, we would love for them to go ahead. The reality is they might not in the next 12 months. Um, the reality is that all the projects that were already in progress being funded by Acts of Grace might come to a screeching halt. Um, and that all of the data we were hoping charities might be able to gather to tell us about all the cool work God was doing through them, we might not be able to get our fingers on this year and under, even understand the impact of what Acts of Grace might fund. So it was really that Monday, I think it's the 22nd or 23rd of March, that we had a conversation and just came to this realization that everything we had planned for the next 12 months, everything we had in process, was in some ways not reliable to go forward, wasn't going to make sense to go forward. If we went forward with it, it was going to place a burden on the charity. It was not going to achieve our mission and vision to push it forward the way we had thought it up. Um, and that we need to come to a screeching halt and rethink everything. Hmm. Yeah. That That's was, about... Uh five four weeks ago now three weeks ago yeah yeah monday the 23rd world water day ironically <laughs> yeah, yeah uh, very ironically there you go <laughs> yeah i mean and then the lead in of course is so so you you put everything to a screeching halt appropriately so because in canada well and around the world everything came to a screeching halt mm -hmm. a lockdown of sorts um and then you guys pivoted in a big way and, and so i'll just kind of lead that in so then what did you guys choose to do uh, as a funder so we have a granting committee that makes all of our grant decisions mm -hmm. um and we held an emergency meeting that night after we had sort of strategized here what we think is a good approach and we ran it past them and got their blessing on it because we were fundamentally saying we're not going to do what we normally do with you and we need you to be okay with that mm -hmm. and they were so we did also take some time that night to really pray over the whole situation which is really important for us um, and then where we landed was for all of our existing grants, we were going to waive all the remaining reporting requirements, hmm. ask existing grant recipients to begin to report in July on things that happened between December and now, who knows if they're going to be able to get any data, if the projects are going to continue, if, you know, things are even going to measure up to what they'd hoped for. So we waived the rest of the reporting requirements. They had all just submitted mid-year. 
We took them all and said, great, if you'd like to share a story at the end of the year, fantastic. We'd love to hear it. Send us pictures if you have them, but nothing official required. Yeah. Um, for anyone that was mid-process of application with us, for the first time ever, we actually canceled the application process, canceled the grant process. Um, we really felt our role at that time, and still is, to be an encourager. And how do you begin to, number one, burden a charity with a, a project they might not never be able to do? How do you choose between charities when they all are starting to feel desperate and uncertain whether their funding will continue? And to make a choice would be to be a discourager. So what we did was we took all of what CRA would require the foundation to grant this year, and we distributed it across all of the applicants that were in that second stage with us at 50% of what they had asked for. So everybody got half of what they had come for that and it was unrestricted. So it was, you know, please as a gift, give it to whatever you need it to be for some charities that's still to the same project. And for others, it's to immediate needs around buckets of water, you know, buckets with tap yeah. and soap in response and others haven't decided yet. It could be salaries. It could be whatever, but acts of grace has never given unrestricted gifts before we have always given grants designated to specific things. And for us to be able to give unrestricted gifts was a completely, a completely new thing. And then we dug deep and looked at who wasn't on that list of applicants that were mid-process with us and said, who would we consider to be the charities that we really partnered with over the last five years? And so to an additional, I think it's nine or 10 charities, we actually released additional unrestricted gifts to them. Um, and that was a same thing, no strings attached. Please use it where you need it. We feel like we've walked the journey with you. We feel like you could use this. Um, for all of them, we've said at some point next July, we would invite them back to an optional process of storytelling, of sharing how we, um, how they see God at work this year. Um, mm -hmm. And we think it's going to be a neat way to stop and be encouraged and encourage each other. Yeah. And then we did a couple more things. We have set up a standing prayer document for our granting committee to continue to pray over prayer requests from all of our um, applicants and all of our past grant recipients from the last five years. Hmm. Um, we have not yet had a chance to launch, but we will be starting a social media campaign that will feature one charity each day, not with an ask, just highlighting to our network who we have partnered with over the last five years, reminding people about the good work that's happening around the world. You know, good news stories are, are never a bad thing, but also reminding people that they're there. Yeah. And then one of the most amazing things that um, the granting committee asked me to do and I got to do and was quite um, an emotional process for me was to call every one of our current grant recipients and all the applicants and all of the partners that were receiving unrestricted funds and listen to them, encourage them, pray with them. And I spent about an hour on the phone with each of them. Um, so the better part of an entire week was spent on the phone and it was a chance for me to pour into them in a way that had nothing to do with money. And for what I realized through that process was many charity leaders needed somewhere safe to be vulnerable and to say, I'm not panicking, but this is hard. Um, and I, yes, I'm a little discouraged and I don't understand how to plan to move forward, but it's great to have you kind of in my corner. Um, and it was, it was kind of humbling to be able to be part of that conversation with them. And I'm glad that that was part of sort of the non-financial approach our granting committee asked us to take with them. Mm -hmm. I wish this interview could go longer. <laughs> <laughs> um, because I think like you hit on so many things around just, uh, yeah, there's so many exciting and interesting things around this that i think our donor community and just people reading uh i mean the whole the, this whole email series is around behind the scenes and so you've given an insight behind the scenes of what kind of goes on you know when pandemic hits but also just the decisions that, that funders have to make uh when life happens because life is you know complicated and interesting um and uh so thank you for taking the time to kind of peel back that curtain and, and share a little bit of, of your process and, and your granting committee's process and your team's process um, in terms of that. And, and just to reveal to our community, you know, we were one of those charities and uh, as we're continuing to update, uh, you know, lockdown in Uganda is continuing to happen. Actually, now we just found out today, this morning for another 21 days, but our team has been invited to work with the district uh, to work with the widows and the orphans to uh, do a, a program with, um, uh, vulnerable people uh, on food insecurity and wash training, so hand, uh, hand clean or sanitization and that sort of thing. Um, and so those funds, the COVID-19, those are things that we had not budgeted for, obviously, when we began this budget setting. Yeah. So these kind of unrestricted gifts allow us to be responsive to the needs on the ground. Awesome. Uh, so that's uh, really exciting, and funders like you 
that allow that to just like, you know, allow us to pivot in that sort of way. So thank you. Uh, and thank you for taking the time to, uh, yeah, uh, to share this with us. So Thanks. And I uh, appreciate all the work you guys are doing to keep moving forward through all of this. Absolutely. Take care. Bye. Take friend. care. Bye. Bye.